Let's take a look to the overview for my today's talk. So at the beginning, I would step in our topic of in vitro diagnostics and give some information about the current challenges in the field of in vitro diagnostics today. Then I will give a very short introduction to the topic of Jesuit technology, coming then, of course, to the main part of the presentation, how liquid handling tasks can be enabled by Piezo technology. And of course, last but not least, I will show how we, PI, can support you and what our capabilities are. So then, let's start with the current challenges in IVD. In vitro diagnostics is an emerging topic, an emerging field and a huge market. And it's an important topic since the last years and decades to make modern testing possible with molecular diagnostics. This makes it possible for doctors to diagnose um, diseases at an early stage and to start therapy. For example, by means of glucose testing for diabetes or to test for cardiometabolic and cancer markers or infectious diseases like HIV. So this makes modern technologies possible for personalized care, so to adapt therapies to the needs of the patients. So in vitro diagnostics, as I said, was an emerging field, but as we all know, the pandemic COVID-19 came over us in the world some months ago and many things changed. Also, of course, the field of in vitro diagnostics. So as we all know, there's an enormous increase in the global demand for testing devices and of course for test consumables. These test devices have to be extremely fast and they should be able to generate accurate test results because this can save life. So it's really, really possible, really necessary that these devices are working fast. Since we are living now in other times than one year ago, it's of course necessary to make these test equipment available for the general population. So the tests can be executed um, in certain spaces everywhere. So it's also necessary that these test devices are compact for point of care use, that they were very fast, reliable, and that they are energy efficient, especially point of care devices. Before we go to the liquid handling tasks that can be enabled by Piezo technology, I want to give you, as I said, a short introduction to Piazza technology that we are all familiar with this topic here. So the word piezo is derived from the Greek word for pressure. Almost 240 years ago in 1880, the brothers Curie discovered the so-called piezo effect. So what they discovered was that a pressure which is generated on certain crystals, for example, quartz, generates charges in these crystals, like you can see in the scheme on the right-hand side. Some time after this discovery, they also discovered that electrical fields can discover these certain crystals like quartz, which is called today the inverse piezoelectric effect. So this is what we are using when dealing with piezo actuators or piezo components. Voltages can apply to these piezo components and then they perform a displacement. This can be also done very, very um, fast so that piezo components generate ultrasound or they do a very precise displacement. So taking a look to the benefits of piezo technologies, which can be used for example, in vitro diagnostics, piezo elements are extremely precise, as I said. So it's possible that they perform a picometer resolution. They are extremely dynamic because due to the solid state effect, they show an instantaneous response time and displacement. Piezo elements are very powerful, so they can generate kilonewton force and they are energy efficient and compact. Also, piezo elements and actuators can be used bidirectional, so they can work as sensor and actuator. The piezo elements and actuators 
produced by PA Ceramic are made of PCT ceramics, which is the standard material for nowadays industrial or medical applications. For further and deeper information about all things Piezo and Piezo technology, please feel free to have a look on our website. But as I said in the title of my presentation, Piezo technology is enabling in vitro diagnostics to do a faster analysis and to get a higher throughput. But how is this possible by using Piezo elements? So first, piezo elements are comparable small in size compared with other technologies. They have a size, of course, depending on their design, of a few centimeters or sometimes millimeters if they are miniaturized. Piezo elements don't use any mechanically moving parts due to the crystal effect they use. So there is no friction or wear, and they are therefore extremely durable. Piazza elements are extremely dynamic, as I already said, their instantaneous displacement due to the application of voltage enables extremely dynamic um, operation. They are multifunctional, as I said, working as sensor or actuator is possible. And of course, due to their compact size, they are really space saving. So in in vitro diagnostic devices, this space saving properties makes it possible to miniaturize in vitro diagnostic devices or to save more space in, for example, point of care devices for other parts like an analysis unit. The low energy consumption of piezo elements is suitable for battery driven applications like point of care devices. So with piezo technology, we try to make the impossible possible. So now let's come to the application of piezo elements. In which areas can piezo technology help for liquid handling tasks? Here in this overview, you can see the tasks that can be supported by piezo elements or piezo actuators. So liquid handling can be done by means of shock redosing, precise droplet generation, very challenging mixing tasks, sample preparation or sorting tasks. So in the following part of my presentation, I will go from left to right through all these topics, presenting you and hopefully inspiring you where piezo technology can help make your IVD devices faster and ensure a higher throughput by efficient liquid handling. So let's take a look to the first application, dosing, shock-free dosing. So dosing is a very challenging task in in vitro diagnostic devices because many devices use microfluidics, as you can see on the left side, microfluidic channels. And sometimes it's not that easy to transport fluidic volumes through these microfluidic channels. So therefore, some support is needed from the outside to push liquid volumes forward in these microfluidic channels. And this can be realized by the help of, for example, pumps or valves. You can see in the center of a slide, um, a scheme of a piezo element supported micro pump structure. So the piezo element is shown in orange. And as I said at the beginning, Piezo elements perform a displacement when a voltage is applied. So this is exactly what is happening here. The orange piezo actuator shown here, for example, a bending element is moving up and down, doing this bending motion, and therefore it's generating a fluid stream and the opening and closing of the valves of this micro pump here. On the right hand side, you can also see another picture how this could work in a micro pump. So again, we see in this case around piezo bending element. And when this bending element is displaced, it generates a fluid stream here in this microfluidic channel, leading to the opening and closing of valves. And of course, in general, it's possible to design only piezo valves with the help of piezo bender 
elements. This is what you can see on the right side of the, the slide. So in blue, the piezo bender by application of voltage, the bending element is moving up and down, opening and closing a valve, very precise, and if necessary, also very dynamic. So let's have a closer look on how this could work. You can see this dotted box on the right upper side. So here I have included a picture of the frequently used piezo elements for this dosing application. I will do the same for the coming slides. So always in this box, you see the frequently used piezo products, but it's also possible depending on the application, of course, to use other piezo elements. So when it comes to piezo micro pumps or valves, as I said, it's possible to use piezoelectric bending elements. You see it on the left side of the slide. Here again, the top view of like a micro pump and in orange, a piezo bending actuator on top of a liquid chamber. These piezo actuators can be, for example, uh, shown here, my multi-layer actuators. And when we take a look inside such a multi-layer actuator, we can see that there, as the name says, multiple layers of piezo ceramic, very thin layers of only some 10 micrometer thickness. And this is also the reason why the driving voltage of these elements is quite comparable low with a maximum of 60 volt. So these bending elements can perform a quite high displacement. So this is not a microscopic displacement, it's macroscopic. You can see it with the eye as shown in the right picture. Um, there is a piezo bender, which is, is shown could open and close a valve here. So these bending elements, they perform, of course, in different ways, depending on how they are placed in a device. So this is shown in the center of the slide. If the piezo bending element is clamped on two sides, the displacement is of course a little bit lower compared to a bending element, which is seen at the top with one free end. There, of course, the displacement is higher because it's not clamped. And in general, as I said, these bending elements are able to generate a millimeter displacement. So this could be an option for moving and pushing liquids in microfluidic channels. But dosing in terms of moving liquids is not the only challenging task in in vitro diagnostic devices. Let's come to the next application, precise generation of droplets. This is a function which is known as it is enabled by piezo technology for decades. So for the generation of really tiny droplets with volumes down to picoliters, the so-called inkjet principle is known for a long time and also, of course, applied in several printing systems. This method is used, for example, for the production of immunoassays by tiny droplets, and it's possible with the inkjet principle to dispense liquids with various viscosities, going from extra solution to solutions with a higher viscosity, including the dispensing and dosing of living cells. Let's take a look to the center of the slide and the scheme here. Here we can see four pictures going from A, B to C and D. And then we can see how piezo elements can be designed inside these dispensing devices for the generation of droplets. So starting with A, we can see that a piezo ceramic plate is placed directly on top of a, for example, tube or capillary transporting the liquid media. It's also possible that this can be realized by a piezo ceramic tube when, uh, for example, a glass capillary is brought through the inner diameter of the tube. We can see in B and C that it's possible to place these piezoceramic plates on diaphragms of these dispensing systems. This also can be done by multi-layer actuators. And of course, in C, again, piezoceramic plate on top of this liquid channel. So what is happening here? As I said, by applying a voltage to a piezoelectric element, the piezo element is doing a displacement. And here this displacement leads to a very short shock pulse, which is introduced to the capillary or the tube leading to 
a droplet to be ejected out of the nozzle here. So the piezo element is not pressing the capillary completely together. It's just introducing a very short pressure pulse so that the droplet is coming out of the nozzle. So as I said, it's possible to use for this PIGMA multilayer actuators, which have these very low driving voltages. And these actuators are also able to generate very high frequencies, up to three kilohertz. So therefore, as I say in my headline, it's possible to generate 3,000 nanoliter droplets per second. So this is very, very dynamic. On the other hand, it's also possible, as you have seen, to use piezoelectric components like discs or plates and placing them above or under or around certain liquid chambers. Taking a look to the pictures at the bottom of the slide, we can see these inkjet um, dispensing systems, these inkjet printers, and how they are generating tiny droplets, picolita droplets. And as I said, this can be used for the production of test consumables or test stripes. For example, maybe also for COVID-19 tests. You can see the test stripes here with these um, lines and uh, reaction areas. And taking a look to the very right side, there we can see these test stripes with yeah, arrayed spotted dots, spotted dots of, of yeah, drugs or reagents that are placed in these test stripes or lab, lab on a tube systems or organ on a tube systems. So all these in vitro diagnostic yeah, test consumables could make use of these emerging technology to produce these tiny picolita droplets. And since droplet dispensing is a very important task in medical technology and biotechnology, I also want to show you that this is possible to do it completely contactless, not with the help of actuators introducing shock pulses, but also or exclusively with the use of ultrasonic waves. So this method is called acoustic droplet ejection, and the droplet ejection is also done by the help of acoustic, so ultrasonic waves. Here in the center of a slide, you can see how this could work. There is a, a container, a liquid reservoir containing the liquid, the sample, the drug, whatever. And you can see that a transducer is played inside of this liquid chamber. It's called HIFU transducer, and HIFU means high intensity focused ultrasound. So that means that here, ultrasound is focused in a special way to reach a certain energy in the focus point, which leads then to the ejection of a droplet. But let's take a closer look to this. So on the left side, you can see again such a kind of high foot transducer, which is used for acoustic droplet ejection. Again, there is a liquid chamber containing the sample and of course the curved transducer. And you can see again that the ultrasonic waves are focused in a special way. And the focus of the ultrasonic waves is placed exactly under the interface of the liquid and the surrounding media, in this case, air. So there, all the mechanical energy of the ultrasonic waves are concentrated, and this leads to the ejection of a droplet out of these liquid reservoirs. So as I said again, this is also a very dynamic method, and it's completely contactless and avoids any cross-contamination. Which piezo elements can be used for such a technique? Um, in the center of the slide, you see a scheme of a curved piezo element called focus bowl, or it's also possible to use other kinds of focus elements made of PCT or, for example, piezo, component, uh, piezo composites. When it comes to a certain space in the device and the space is limited, then of course it's also possible to use completely flat piezo elements. These flat, flat piezo elements are called annular rays, and you can see them on the skin here. They are designed like Fresnel lenses, and they are completely flat with a certain electrode structure providing the generation of focused ultrasound and also depending on the electronic the steering of these ultrasonic focus in set direction. So droplet generation is a method that can be enabled by piezo elements or piezo actuators. 
But there is another very important task, a very challenging task for IVD devices. And this is mixing. So since IVD devices often use microfluidic channels, mixing is a very challenging task because these microfluidic channels mostly have a very low diameter. So the Reynolds number is mostly lower than one. And in these channels, there's most of the time just laminar flow. And it's really hard to mix certain fluids or media because using just these microfluidic channels would take a very long distance for yeah, like a meander channel to mix certain fluids together. But here again, piezo technology can help because mixing with ultrasound is possible. You can see it in the scheme here. There is a microfluidic channel containing three different media and ultrasonic waves induce a mixing, as you can see here. For example, a blending of multi-phase components. On the right-hand side, again, a picture how this microfluidic streaming looks like when it's introduced in a microchannel with the help of ultrasound. So as I said, mixing is a very challenging task, but it's already known that this is possible using PZT components. Taking a look to this black and white scheme, we can see that there is a piezo transducer, which could be a piezo PCT element. And this is placed below a liquid chamber. It's also possible to place it above it. So it's in direct contact with a matching layer and the generated ultrasound is traveling through the media and leading to a mixing. The mixing effects can be measured, as you can see on the two pictures below. So on the left-hand side, you see PCT using two different frequencies, and we can see the acoustic streaming velocity and magnitude. In the center of the slide, we can see, of course, that the mixing leads to a change in the concentration, which is desired in these applications. Here, examples of urea and uh, glucose mixing. And on the right-hand side, again, there is a picture of the, the mixing processes and the velocities which occur due to ultrasonic mixing. As I said, piezo elements have a multifunctional characteristic. So for, for this purpose, they, they generate ultrasonic waves, which can be used to do this mixing task but it's also possible to use another function introduced by piezo elements. And this could be, in this application, the generation of heat. So depending on the used ultrasonic frequency and the duration of the sonication, it's possible to introduce a heating of five to 10 degrees Celsius inside these liquid chambers or microfluidic channels. And therefore it could be possible to generate a controlled temperature regime inside in vitro diagnostic devices to generate um, accelerated reaction times and stable reaction parameters. So mixing introduced by ultrasound can also be done in terms of sample preparation. So sample preparation that I want to show here means cell loses. So when a liquid sample is introduced in an in vitro diagnostic device, it mostly contains cells. And of course, certain uh, analyses need to, to detect parts of the inner side of cells, for example, DNA. And therefore, it's necessary to yeah, release the DNA from cells or, as I said, other cellular components. This can be done with the help of ultrasound, and it's possible to integrate ultrasonic transducers directly in in vitro diagnostic devices. This could guarantee a seamless, fast, and of course, contamination-free sample preparation. In the scheme here, you can see that these ultrasonic waves, they generate compression and refraction zones when they are traveling through media like tissue or fluids. And depending on the frequencies used and of course the power, cavitation bubbles can be introduced and they generate so huge mechanically forces that structures like a cell wall can be disrupted and therefore samples can be sonicated, the cell wall is broken up and the inner parts of the cell can be released and this all in one device by the help of ultrasonic transducers for cell loses. But not only mixing and cell loses is 
a task for IVD devices. There are also very challenging sorting tasks that have to be realized in the context of in vitro diagnostics. For example, for cytometry, flow cytometry is the gold standard, the known um, techniques for several years where cells are sorted by means of their charges. But it's also possible to do this with the help of piezo technology. As I said, piezo actuators work extremely fast. So it's also possible to do cell sorting or particle sorting very fast. So by taking a whole blood sample, therefore it's possible to sort certain kinds of cells, like for example, circulating tumor cells. So in the scheme here, you can see how cell sorting or particle sorting can be executed by the help of piezo, piezo actuators. So we see a microfluidic channel <clears throat> splitting up in three different ways. And you can see that before the splitting of the three microchannels, there is a piezo actuator directly placed on top of this microfluidic channel. You also can see that these actuators moving up and down, so like a bending actuator, but this could also be a multi-layer stack actuator, introducing this very dynamic motion. And due to this motion, there are pressure pulses generated in the liquid here in this microchannel, and these pressure pulses, they move particles or cells in the certain microfluidic channels. So as I said, this can be done extremely fast. But challenging sorting tasks can also be executed, of course, with the help of ultrasound and ultrasonic waves, extremely dynamic and very precise. On the left side, you can see a scheme of ultrasonic waves, certain frequencies and wavelengths, and the corresponding physical effects that occur in microfluidic channels. For example, the acoustophoretic effect. You also can see, depending on the frequency and wavelengths, how big cavitation bubbles would be that could be introduced in microfluidic channels of certain size. But let's take a look to the right-hand side scheme A and B. There are two ways how particle manipulation can be executed with ultrasonic waves, so with acoustic tweezers. One is shown in this black and white picture named A, the use of bulk acoustic waves. So we can see that there's a piece of tea, so a piezo ceramic um, component placed under uh, a liquid chamber. Ultrasonic waves are introduced to this liquid chamber. They propagate in the liquid media and you can see this pressure node. So a certain way how these ultrasonic waves are propagating through the media. In the picture B, um, there is shown how so-called surface acoustic waves can generate standing waves in microfluidic devices. These standing waves can be generated, for example, with piezo components using special electrode structures, as you can see here, called IDT, interdigital electrodes. So in both cases, ultrasound is generating standing waves with so-called pressure nodes and antinodes. And as you can see at the bottom of the slide here, this leads to a controlled sorting of particles and cells. For example, sorting by size or sorting by weight. These are just two ways how it can be executed. And again, this is completely contactless and extremely precise and fast. So I hope that these examples could inspire you where and how piezo technology can enable and enhance your liquid handling tasks. Now let's come to our capabilities. How can we from PI support you and your applications? As I already said, the piezo technology competence center of PI has more than 30 years has 30 years experience in all things piezo. So our core competence is the design of piezo components, piezo actuators, and of course the manufacturing, as well as the manufacturing of transducers and piezo assemblies. We're always happy to support you with challenging assembling steps like gluing and soldering. So we're always interesting interested to have you more by value added designs. And we have a very deep expertise in this. As I also have shown, 
PI is able to manufacture very small miniaturized piezo components, the smallest ones available at the market currently. And of course, we are able to manufacture flexible quantities, for example, ranging from sometimes single pieces to millions of pieces a year. To go in there a little bit more in detail, you can see here the four pictures and starting at the left side, I just can say that PI and the Competence Center for Piezo Technology, we are not just manufacturing piezo elements and transducers. We are starting very early in the value chain because PI is developing all piezo material by its own. So we have different piezo material formulations and always working on new material um, developments. Of course, the design and manufacturing of piezo elements, sub-assemblies and actuators are our core competence. As I said, with a deep expertise in assembling technology by means of gluing, soldering and assembling, for example, to sub-assemblies for transducers. And to meet the demands for the medical device industry, we also have 1,600 square meters of clean room environment so that we can manufacture your piezo solution suitable for medical demands. I just want to give some information about our products and how they can be customized because most of the piezo elements that we do are adjusted completely to the customer needs. So let's start with piezo elements. I already said that PI is developing the piezo material by its own. So we have numerous piezo materials available. And of course, we have lead free piezos under development. We are able to manufacture piezo elements with the narrowest tolerances and of course, with different electrode materials and structures completely to your needs. The frequency of this piezo element is adjustable, of course, by means of the geometry. And when it comes to transducers and transducer subassemblies, we from PI, we are always happy to support with jointly developed designs. So we offer, of course, mechanical and electrical interfaces. As you can see, these flexible PCBs and piezo elements for plug and play solutions. And again, as I said, our deep expertise in assembling technology. When it comes to piezoelectric actuators, like I've mentioned some more times, um, Pigma multilayer actuators, PI is quite famous for them. Um, it's also possible to customize them completely because the actuator geometry and the design determines, of course, the properties of the actuator. So it's possible to adjust the actuator displacement, which can go from micrometers to millimeters, the driving voltage, of course, the operation frequency, which is quite low compared to other techniques, especially using multi-layer piezo actuators, as well as the blocking force, so the force generated by the actuators. This is all influenced by the piezo geometry and the design, which we are able to adapt completely to your needs. So PI is supporting with piezo technology for your medical device production, for your applications and your needs. But we are also active in other fields of medical technology, not only in the enablement of in vitro diagnostic devices and technologies. We are also supporting in other medical devices, topics like medical implants or piezo technology for minimally invasive devices. As I am shown, we are able to produce the tiniest piezo elements available at the market currently. We are supporting roundabout ultrasonic transducers in the medical field for especially used for surgical tools or for new and emerging applications like incisionless surgeries by means of therapeutic ultrasound and complex assembling of piezoelectric transducers. So with this overview, I would like to end my 
presentation. I hope it was a very inspiring and interesting insight for you in the world of Piazza technology and how Piazza technology can enable your liquid handling task to make it faster to get a higher throughput in your application. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm really looking forward for your questions. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie, for this presentation. Just a reminder for the audience that in order to ask any questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. You just need to type them into the box at the top corner of your screen and then click Submit. But it looks like we've got some questions coming through already. So the first one for today is, um, how far does the level of integration of piezo elements go in the applications mentioned? Thank you for this question, Kalina. So as I've shown, our core competence is, of course, piezo technology. But we also have a deep expertise in many, many assembling steps. So going from gluing, which is sometimes quite um, complex when dealing with piezo elements, to soldering, which is also a very important step in the manufacturing and assembling of transducers. So here we have really deep core competence to offer these assembling steps, gluing and soldering, for example, by, um, the, by, by assembling piezo elements for piezoelectric transducers in different ways. And we are always happy to support with your, our assembling technology know-how. Perfect. Thank you very much. Another one that we have is what certification does PI have? So PI has, of course, the ISO 9001 certification. And when it comes to medical device production, most of the time or in general, we are the manufacturer of piezo elements and subassembly subsystems. So um, we have the clean room environment to meet the demands for our customers uh, doing and developing these medical devices. So therefore we can produce yes, elements and actuators in this clean room environment, yeah, meeting all the demands that are necessary for our customers in the medical world. Thank you very much. Another question. that you provided for my applications. Again, can you please repeat the question? Apologies. What quantities of piezo elements can be provided for medical applications? Thank you very much for this question. So in general, PI is very flexible when it comes to quantities. So for us, it's always, of course, good to be part of development projects at the very beginning of projects. So um, at the beginning of development projects, PI is possible to provide low quantities and sometimes also single pieces of special actuators or transducers. And when it comes then to the series of product production, um, we are able to offer high quantities going from uh, yeah, several thousands to several million pieces of piezos per year. So we are very flexible uh, in, in uh, yeah, producing piezo elements. Thank you very much. Another question that we have is, have you applied some of your findings to the oil and gas industry, moving oil or fluids in the reservoir? Also mixing a fluid in the well bore to help with lift. So at the moment, the applications that we are serving is in the field of oil and gas is um, something like borehole um, investigation. So um, where piezo transducers are placed quite close to these um, lodging and drilling um, tools to examine processes during the, the drilling. So um, as far as I know, uh, also certain kind of flow measurement, um, how much 
oil or liquid in general is transported. Um, yes, these are in general the oil and gas applications that we serve at the moment. Thank you very much. Just a reminder for the audience that your questions will be available to be answered at a later date. So that just leaves me to thank Anne-Marie for this presentation and to PI for sponsoring this session. To the attendees, you will receive an email shortly telling you how you can access the on-demand version of this webinar, or you can access it through our website, which is www.business-review-webinars.com. We look forward to sharing further webinars with you, so please do keep an eye on the website just mentioned and follow us on Twitter at BR Webinars for daily updates. Also, you can join our LinkedIn group, Business Review Webinars. Thank you all once again, and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you.